For the sake of this lecture, I'm going to mainly be speaking about the 200 and 300 hurdles. Though the 400 hurdles are similar, they're a lot different than these two races. And just as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, when it comes to the 200 and 300 hurdles, you should convert some of those athletes who are decent in the 200 and in the 400 and convert them into 200 and 300 hurdlers because you never know what they could end up being um, with the times that they already have in their open races. So to put it in perspective, you want to add about 2.5 to 4 seconds to the best mark of the 200 for a youth athlete. So we're going to take Lucy, whose best 200 time is 28.31 seconds. We're also going to take Jesse, whose best 200 time is 24.89 seconds. Now granted their training, if you add 2.5 to 4 seconds to their best 200 time, you're going to get a 30.86 to 32.31 for Lucy, and 27.39 to 28.89 for Jesse. Now let's take the same situation with two high school kids. We have Susie here, whose best open 300 is 42.07 seconds. And we have Bobby, whose best open 300 is 36.3 seconds. So if we use the same equation of 2.5 to 4 seconds added to their best open race, then that would give Susie a 44.57 to 46.07, and that would give Bobby a 38.85 to 40.3 in the 300 hurdles. Now just as the 100 and the 110 hurdles, the 200, 300, and 400 hurdles are also rhythm races. So with that being said, it is a necessity, not necessarily mandatory, but it is a necessity to be able to hurdle with both legs. Why? Because at some point, in order to prevent from being this guy, you're going to have to be able to hurdle with whatever leg comes up based on your rhythm. So other than making sure that you're strengthening both sides of your hips, doing drills on both sides is also good for those kids that are going to become 200, 300, or 400 hurdlers. Now for the youth athletes running the 200 hurdles, you don't really want to focus on steps so much, more so as making sure that their rhythm continues down the track. But if you are to use steps, I kind of lumped up the boys and girls together. So to hurdle one out of the blocks, it's 12 to 14 steps. From hurdle two to hurdle five, it's between 17 and 20 steps. And then the last 40 meters, they're just trying to get to the finish line. As for the high school girl 300 hurdlers, Typically, to hurdle one, they're going to take 22 to 25 steps. Between hurdle two and hurdle eight, it's going to be between 14 and 17 steps. And for the boys, to hurdle one, it's going to take between 20 and 23 steps. And in between hurdles two and eight, it's going to be anywhere from 13 to 15 steps. With that being said, you as a coach are going to have to create workouts that teach rhythm one and force athletes to use both legs in your workout sessions when it comes to the 200 and 300 hurdles. So the first workout that I usually give them when we start hurdling is a plus five drill. And if you guys remember this drill, it's a drill where you put the first hurdle on a correct mark and then you go plus five, the next hurdle, plus 10, plus 15, etc. What you're looking for in this drill is one that the athletes feel what the rhythm is like to keep their stride open. And you're making sure that they're doing this drill on both their dominant lead and trail, and non-dominant lead and trail. segmented version of the plus five drill same idea I want them to focus on really keeping their rhythm keeping their stride open while they're attacking the hurdle and they're still going to complete this drill on their dominant and non-dominant lead and trail legs And once your athletes begin to get to the point where they're starting to get comfortable hurdling with both legs, then you throw a curveball at them just to make sure. So then this is where you can start throwing alternating drills at them where they're going to do workouts or drills where they're going to be alternating during the workout. 
For this simple drill, you're going to put the hurdles for girls at 8.5 meters and for boys at 9 meters. Now the number of hurdles is up to you, but when I first start this drill, I only set up between 5 and 7 hurdles. Now the next drill I have, these are called turnarounds. Now you can do these on a track or you can do these on a soft surface, maybe turf, grass, etc. Um, the hurdles are 20 yards apart and there are 10 total. Five are going down and five are coming back up. As you're doing this drill, you're going to do your dominant trail and lead leg going up. That'll be seven steps in between. You're going to turn right around and come back and do your non-dominant trail and lead leg. That's also going to be seven steps. Once you start alternating, then it's going to be a six-step drill where you alternate at each hurdle. Also, you want to make sure to get your curve work in when you're doing the 200 and 300 hurdles. Um, there's three different drills that you could do. Uh, the random setup is you literally take hurdles and set them up in random places and force the athletes to attack the hurdle with whatever leg comes up. You have your traditional setup where the athletes will have the hurdles on the correct marks, cheat it a little bit, and then they'll attack them. And then finally, you have your 15 to 20 meter drills where you set hurdles up 15 to 20 meters apart and have the athletes attack the hurdles with whatever leg comes up. And finally, acceleration into hurdle one. As I told you in the beginning, for girls, it's about 22 to 25 steps to the first hurdle. And for boys, it's about 20 to 23 steps. Um, the goal is to establish the rhythm from the jump so that they can complete that throughout their races.